All right, so obviously we are still tracking the ongoing chaos over in the Middle East after that Hamas-led attack into Israeli-controlled territory as Israel is now significantly ramping up and escalating their firepower being directed towards the Gaza Strip. And so I got some uh, in insane video here that I'm going to show you guys that was directly posted by Benjamin Netanyahu himself and, um, you know, get into a bunch more of little updates that we've seen here and there. Before we get into this, I just want to remind you guys this footage that we're seeing coming out of the Gaza Strip. Gaza is one of the most densely populated places on the face of the planet. You have about 2 million or so Palestinians that live in this region. They have absolutely no ability to move, to leave, to go anywhere else, which was part of that insane comment from some of the Israeli uh, authorities, including Benjamin Netanyahu himself just yesterday, who said Palestinians should leave the area because essentially we're about to destroy it. And uh, they have no freedom of movement. They have you know, a poisoned water supply. They have no control over the amount of water, the amount of electricity that they have. You know, everything is restricted and controlled by Israel. They, again, are blockaded by land and by sea, both by the governments of Egypt and uh, the government of Israel. And you have, like, unemployment that is damn near a majority of the population there. The average age within uh, uh, the Gaza Strip is, uh, I think, around, like, 17, 18 years old. Half the population is children. And so this is essentially the, the region that we are now seeing facing this kind of destruction. So let's go ahead and watch a little bit of this here posted again by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu himself, essentially documenting his own war crimes. So, I mean, obviously you can see apartment buildings, again, looks like entire city blocks that are being flattened to the ground. And I just want you guys to keep in the back of your mind, you know, Israel is going to justify this and say, okay, this is a, you know, Hamas military installation. We don't know any of the details about that. We don't know any of the, the actual evidence that Israel has that any Hamas militants are located in any of these different locations. But I'll just remind you guys that over the years, we have seen countless, countless times where the government of Israel has bombed apartment buildings. They bombed that AP building, the Associated Press, flattened that to the ground, and then they come back and they give these justifications with little to no evidence whatsoever that uh, Hamas militants were located anywhere near these sites. But um, again, I mean, I want you guys to keep in mind that Israel uses this excuse that, uh, you know, Hamas likes to hide behind civilians, and so therefore we have, you know, some sort of a, a moral justification to go in and even kill civilians in order to attack these Hamas militants. But I mean, look at the levels of destruction that we are seeing here. I mean, half of these buildings are almost all of these buildings are just completely destroyed in an entire region that is the size of a city block. I mean, again, we've gotten some casualty numbers out so far from the Gaza Strip. Obviously, it's a complete fucking nightmare, and we'll touch on that here in a second, but, you know, this is not Israel doing a, a targeted strike or some sort of special military operation or incursion to go after only Hamas militants. No, this is them essentially declaring that the entirety of the Gaza Strip and everybody living within it is subject to this kind of treatment because some Hamas militants went in and conducted a pretty brutal and horrific attack against including, you know, Israeli soldiers as well as Israeli civilians, right? And obviously took hostages as well. So, I mean, nobody I think is excusing, at least nobody that I've seen on the left, is excusing attacking innocent civilians by Hamas. But I mean, you know, all of these people who have, I think, justifiable critiques of Hamas for killing civilians, innocent men, women, and children, right? Those same people are utterly silent when Israel turns around and does the exact same thing to Palestinians on a scale that is 10 times greater than anything Hamas has done. And not only are they, they silent on this, but they're actively encouraging it. I mean, so many of the conservative politicians and pundits and liberals as well, within the media, within the US government, within the Israeli government, they, they have like a, a bloodlust right now for trying to get some sort of vengeance against Palestinian people. And this is this is collective punishment, again, for the actions that uh, you know Hamas engaged in a while ago. We also had this uh, update here as pointed out by Samuel uh, Romani, he says Israel is calling up 300,000 reservists, and uh, it had already said that it had 100,000 reservists by the Gaza border, so it looks like they're, as he points out here, doing a rapid-fire mobilization for some sort of a ground invasion into Gaza on top of the, uh, you know, bombings that we just watched as posted by Benjamin Netanyahu. We also had an update here from a recent speech, as pointed out here by Mario, that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu gave. He just basically lays out some of the bullet points here, saying Hamas asked for war and will 
face war, a number of militants are still in our areas, and we will continue to eliminate them, which is kind of insane, because again, this is like the first time in modern history that uh, this kind of a military operation has been successful by Hamas. I mean, it looks like, based on what Benjamin Netanyahu is saying here, that some of these Hamas militants still have control, like right now, of some of these military installations that they took over, and they're still trying to clear them out from Israeli-controlled territory. Um, he also says, we will work on fortifying our borders with Lebanon and the West Bank. So a couple of different, you know, important things there to focus on. If Israel does launch a, a massive ground invasion into Gaza and continues to uh, bomb the Gaza Strip, you could have some attacks that are launched by Hezbollah. Now, Hezbollah has significantly more military might than uh, Hamas fighters have, you know, ever had in their entire history. So uh, that could open up basically like a two-front war for the government of Israel, which would be a nightmare for them. And, um, you know, another thing that he says there about the West Bank, I think is interesting because, you know, part of the reason why I think these Hamas militants were able to be so successful in the first place in terms of capturing some of the uh, points that they did and, uh, you know, doing this little short incursion that they did is because the Israeli security forces had so many of their troops and battalions that were in the West Bank. Why were they in the West Bank and not on the Gaza border? Well, that was because they were helping to aid and abet some of these violent terrorist Israeli settlers in the West Bank who are continuing to push to expand their illegal settlements into Palestinian territory. So they're preoccupied with like this neo-colonial project over there in the West Bank. And so it looks like they didn't have as many troops as they otherwise would have to prevent this kind of attack by Hamas on the Gaza border. And obviously, Benjamin Netanyahu is facing a significant degree of criticism even from uh, within Israel that we'll touch on here in a second. But he continues down here. He says, we want to secure international support so that we can move with a large margin of freedom, whatever the fuck that means, I guess, just flattening the Gaza Strip. Again, not sure what he means by that. He certainly does have international support, both from, you know, the United States and other Western European countries who completely ignore the plight that the Palestinian people have been subjected to for decades and decades and decades and come out with these very reductive and simplified statements saying Israel has a right to defend themselves, which apparently means Israel has a right to continue doing the ethnic cleansing, to continue doing the apartheid, to continue bombing the shit out of Gaza, which, you know, innocent men, women, and children are getting caught up in the crosshairs. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's, I guess, what they mean by international support and by self-defense. It's not exactly self-defense in my view, but he continues. He says, I call on the opposition leaders to form an emergency unity government. So he's going to try to continue pushing for more power to be accumulated in uh, sort of his hands within Israel. And keep in mind, you've also had many widespread protests domestically against Benjamin Netanyahu, and there are many people within the government who also don't like Benjamin Netanyahu and his extremely far-right uh, coalition that he has been put in place, but it seems like he's trying to push for even opposition leaders in Israel to try to sort of circle the wagons around him or sort of back him up, and uh, they say every place Hamas operates, uh, ap operates from will turn into ruins, and again, translation of this, I mean, Israel considers essentially everywhere in Gaza to be a place that Hamas may be operating in, so again, gives you an indication of what potential targets they're going to be hitting, which is to say everything. Um, he says the internal division in Israel is a thing of the past, which is, again, certainly something that he personally would hope for, that, uh, you know, people will stop going out into the streets to protest his government and his power grabs and his judicial reforms that he's tried to put in place. Um, again, he says his, his first step is to clear the surrounding towns that a lot of these Hamas militants apparently still have control over. And, uh, you know, he continues and continues, uh, you know, ramping up some of the rhetoric here. What we will do to our enemies will reverberate for generations. Uh, our enemies in the region understand the significance of having a U.S. Air aircraft carrier on the way, which is just part of the way that the United States is uh, supporting Israel and standing by our apartheid ally in the Middle East, which the United States loves to refer to as the only democracy in the Middle East, even though you, by definition, cannot be an apartheid and a democracy at the same time. But as he pointed out there, Navy deploys warships to the Mediterranean Sea near Israel following Hamas attacks. Now, I don't think the United States is actually going to launch a, you know, a missile barrage at the Gaza Strip or anything. But this is, again, just basically flexing our military might and, uh, I guess, showing an act of solidarity with Israel in this moment. Uh, we also had this update just in terms of uh, U.S. continued support for Israel financially and otherwise. As pointed out here by Jeff Stein, senior administration officials told senators last night in a briefing that the White House will be asking 
Congress to approve additional military aid to Israel, including to replenish the Iron Dome and for further artillery, and uh, the dollar amount is unclear, but he points out here that the U.S. already provides more than $3 billion per year to Israel to, again, continue with the status quo that is getting us absolutely fucking nowhere other than the continued, uh, you know, obliteration of the Palestinian people. Uh, and just an update in terms of some of the consequences of this. Now, these are numbers that are going to be flexible. They're going to continue to skyrocket over the next couple of days as this sort of offensive led by Israel ramps up. But uh, they point out here that according to Palestinian Mi Ministry of Health, at least 91 children in Gaza have already already been killed by Israeli airstrikes since Saturday. Again, that number is bound to go up. 91 children, at least, in Gaza have been confirmed to be killed just by some of these airstrikes. And again, who knows how high that number could possibly go, especially if they launch some sort of a massive, wide-scale, you know, 100,000, 200,000 person ground invasion. And uh, they also announced this as well. I touched on this yesterday, but I think it's important to just focus on some of the rhetoric as a reminder here from Israeli officials that they are using to talk about the 2 million people that live in the Gaza a strip they say here from the cradle, uh, the Israeli uh, defense minister, this guy Yoav Gallant, said, quote, I have ordered a complete siege on the Gaza Strip, which is essentially already under siege. I mean, pretty much, depending on how you want to give a definition of a siege. I mean, certainly they're ramping it up right now uh, as they're continuing with this bombing effort and potential ground invasion. But, you know, people in Gaza are suffering in some of the most brutal conditions on the face of the planet. So, I mean, this is brutality that is already on top of what was already brutality before. But uh, he says he's ordered a complete siege and there will be no electricity, no food, no fuel, everything is closed, we are fighting human animals, and we will act accordingly. So just to make things explicitly clear, right, no food, no fuel, everything is closed, no electricity, um, you know, that is going to affect the innocent men, women, and children within the Gaza Strip, right? This is what's called collective punishment. Again, this is a war crime. This is not legal. This is not a, a legal, you know, thing that you can do under the laws of humanitarian war and international law. Completely illegal. It's obviously a war crime. And again, it is collective punishment of the entirety of the two million people who are already subjected to regular, uh, you know, collective punishment by the government of Israel. So again, the rhetoric that he's using, they're fighting human animals. Okay, this is what they think of the Palestinian people, right? He's not just referring to Hamas. You might think maybe he's just talking about the specific Hamas fighters who launched this attack. No, I mean, you can see from their actions. You can see how they engage in their military operations. You can see, based on their previous statements, how some of the guys within Benjamin Netanyahu's government talk about the Palestinian people. They legitimately do not view them as people for the most part, okay? So this is, again, just another troubling, uh, you know, update there there in terms of what we're about to see over the next couple of days. We also had some interesting critiques that were coming out from uh, some Israeli uh, outlets. This is from uh, Haaretz, which is one of the uh, you know most prominent outlets there. And uh, it's from their editorial board, basically pinning the blame here on uh, Benjamin Netanyahu for his extremely far right government that's in place right now and the escalation of violence in uh, the West Bank, especially that we have seen recently under his government. They say, quote, the disaster that befell Israel is the clear responsibility of one person, Benjamin Netanyahu. The prime minister completely failed to identify the dangers he was consciously leading Israel into when establishing a government of annexation and dispossession while embracing a foreign policy policy that openly ignored the existence and the rights of Palestinians. Now, this foreign policy partially has to do with what was called the Abram Accords, right? This Middle East peace initiative that was led under the Trump administration and then continued under the Biden administration, which was just an abject failure. I mean, you're trying to get together essentially a lot of these like Gulf monarchy countries within the Middle East to do some sort of like a security alliance with Israel. And as a part of this, they completely ignored even the existence of the Palestinian people and basically just swept that under the rug, right? They're creating some sort of a Middle East peace deal without addressing the, you know, most powerful country in the entire region, the state of Israel, conducting an, an ongoing apartheid and an ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. So obviously that deal was complete dog shit, was complete bullshit, and isn't actually effective in what it was claiming that it was going to do. And um, so now we continue here with uh, another thing that was posted just uh, today here by uh, Haritz as well, pointing out some previous reporting back from uh, statements that were made in 2019 by Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, this is, again, something I touched on yesterday, just sort of like as, as a part of this concept of blowback and uh, how Hamas came to power in the first place within Gaza. They have a direct quote here, and uh, this is from Benjamin Netanyahu telling his Likud party, uh, the Knesset members back in March of 2019, direct quote from him, anyone who wants to thwart the establishment 
of a Palestinian state has to support bolstering Hamas, bolstering Hamas, and transferring money to Hamas, this is part of our strategy. Okay, so you can talk about this statement, you can also go back to the 1970s and 1980s when the Israeli government was doing a similar thing and trying to help to get Hamas off the ground, and the reason they want to do this is because, you know, contrary to what a lot of people online, conservatives and liberals, will, will, will try to get you to believe, Israel does not want an actual peaceful solution to this ongoing conflict, okay? As they're continuing to expand illegal settlements under international law into the West Bank and fragmenting Palestinians into a million different enclaves, okay, as they're continuing with their apartheid policies, as they're continuing to strangle the Palestinian people in Gaza, surprisingly, they don't actually give a shit about having some sort of a two-state solution. I mean, how mind-blowing is it that the United States is still pretending like a two-state solution of a state of Israel and a state for the Palestinians is still on the table? It's not on the table. It's not even logistically possible anymore, given how fragmented and dispossessed, the Israeli government has forced the Palestinian people to be at this point. So a two-state solution, it's off the table. It's not even possible. It's not even something they're interested in doing. Okay, and on top of that, you have statements like this, and you also have the history from decades ago where, you know, far-right politicians like this, they want a group like Hamas to be in position, in a position of power within Gaza, where, you know, to, to govern the Palestinian people, because then that allows them to continue with their far-right colonial project, with the apartheid and to turn around and use more radical groups like Hamas as a cudgel to say, look, look how radical they are. All the Palestinian people are terrorists. They're animals. You know, there's no way we could possibly have some sort of a peaceful solution or, you know, create some sort of a democracy, including the Palestinian people, because they're all terrorists, right? So that's why they sort of want a group like Hamas to be in that position, right? It's a way to weaponize that. It's a way to drive a wedge in, in, in between any sort of like peace process that could even potentially be on the table. Okay, so I think that's a very important sort of historical historical context to be aware of there, right? As there are all of these critiques coming out from Benjamin Netanyahu about the animals that are Hamas terrorists and everything like that. Again, I don't like Hamas, right? I'm not a fan of Hamas. You know, I think what they did during that first attack, that was absolutely a war crime. You can't just go around attacking innocent civilians. Obviously, nobody's fucking in favor of that. But you also have to recognize shit like this. You also have to recognize the underlying conditions that led to the rise of a group like Hamas in order to get the full picture here, right? And again, it's not as if the, the government of Israel, the military apparatus of Israel, the intelligence services of Israel have not conducted the same exact fucking crimes of Hamas at a scale that is a hundred times greater than anything Hamas has ever done done. And so we continue here with a little bit more that I saw, again, floating around my timeline. So this is back on the, the U.S. sort of like, um, you know, uh, U.S. tactics, I guess, in terms of showing support for uh, Israel during this. We also had this that I did want to mention because, you know, again, I'm not a fan of Hamas, and, and this is part of the reason why, uh, you know, I would say something like that. I mean, here from Reuters, Hamas armed wing threatens to kill some of the hostages, the captives, if Israel continues their attacks in the Gaza Strip without warning, as well as the West Bank. And um, so, you know, I mean, again, this is absolutely brutal. I'm sure over the next couple of days, because Israel is certain, certainly not going to let up with their attacks in the Gaza Strip, we're, we're probably going to be seeing some people being executed uh, by Hamas if this reporting is accurate. And uh, I think they even said that they were going to potentially post some of the videos of this. So, I mean, again, it's just a, a completely fucked up, brutal cycle of violence that I, I want to emphasize at the end of the day, which is the most important takeaway that you can possibly have from this kind of a situation. There is one side in this equation that has the power to end this brutality, to end this cycle of violence, and it is certainly not the, the Palestinian people who are living under apartheid, okay? The Palestinian people who are facing neo-colonization, the Palestinian people who are facing constant bombardment, or what the Israeli government literally calls mowing the lawn, okay, within the Gaza Strip. It's certainly not the people who are losing their homes and being displaced, right? It's not, it's not the people who don't even have a functioning government, let alone a standing military, right? It is the actual power center that is the government of Israel, that is back up by the most powerful country and military on the face of the planet, the United States. They have the power to actually end this cycle of violence. They don't want to end the cycle of violence. They want to escalate the cycle of violence. And so we're just going to keep seeing completely fucked up stories like this. Again, it's just an absolute nightmare. And I have a couple of different things. I'm getting towards like almost 20 minutes of this video. 
So I'll save some of the other things um, that I was going to talk about in this for an additional video probably later today or tomorrow. And um, yeah, I mean, I'll just leave you guys with that. I mean, there, there are some of the updates. Again, you know, I get, I get fucking worked up talking about this issue because it's something where my timeline, especially on, on Twitter or x.com now, it's full of people who are just completely bloodthirsty, right? I've seen statements from politicians like Nikki Haley, politicians like Mike Pence, and, uh, you know, they're, they're absolutely bloodthirsty, calling for uh, essentially Gaza to be flattened to the ground. You know, men, women, and children and be damned who have absolutely nothing to do uh, with, uh, you know, Hamas's attacks into Israeli territory. And, um, you know, I see all of these people on my timeline who are just so reductive in their analysis of this, who have no, you know, sympathy for the Palestinian people who have been subjected to what they've been subjected for or to for decades and decades and decades. And there's no serious analysis that's going on, whether it's in conservative circles, liberal circles, the mainstream media, there's no serious analysis in terms of what, like, step one would be in terms of ending the cycle of violence, right? It's just sort of always this this tit for tat and, oh, Hamas just launched this attack out of nowhere. Nobody could have foreseen this coming. It's not as if there's any blowback or historical analysis that we could do to understand this in a fuller capacity or anything like that. No, it's all just simplified. It's all just reductive. And uh, it's incredibly frustrating because, again, you know, we have all of these people who come out and I think rightfully condemn the killing of civilians by Hamas. And then now we're seeing this escalation of violence by the government of Israel into the Gaza Strip. As I showed you guys at the beginning of this video, you know, all of those different tapes of, of entire city blocks being fucking destroyed, absolutely obliterated, you know, men, women, and children. Already we have dozens, over 90 children being killed in just some of these airstrikes alone, and that's before the ground invasion is uh, apparently going to take place. You have Israeli politicians coming out and uh, basically talking about Palestinians as if they're, they're animals, right? And um, so, you know, you, you don't have people who are willing to look at this, I think, in an objective way and to understand that this, this can seem like a complicated issue at surface level if, if you're reading sort of mainstream media outlets, if you're just sort of like loosely following the narrative. But when you get down to the core of it, this is not a complicated issue unless your morality is ambiguous around the issue of apartheid and ethnic cleansing. That's really what this comes down to. Again, there is one side that has the power to end this brutal cycle of violence, and that is the government of Israel and the country that is there their, their most fervent backer and defender, the United States of America. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying.